Well, my next guest on Your Story with Melinda is Mike Gordon. He is a speaker, an itinerant speaker, who's spoken over 2,000 times all over the world, from North America to Asia, and just a few months heading to Dubai. But he shared the stage with people like Nick Vujicic and Francis Chan and Newsboys and Lecrae, and his message is of hope, that Jesus changes the world and Jesus can change you. He didn't grow up in a Christian home and his story is heartbreaking and hard, but because of community and mentors and mission trips, he found his way back to God. This is a show you won't wanna miss. Well, Mike Gordon, thank you so much for being on the show with me today. Well, thank you for having me. This is awesome. I know. And you're so busy. And I grabbed you and got you into the studio in your crazy itinerant, pretty amazing speaking like world. Mm. I, I cannot believe you've already spoken like over 2,000 times. I can't believe that That either. means you started when you were like seven years old yeah, because you're like so it. young. Yep. <laughs> and uh, it's great. So let's talk about that um, before I really dive into your story because I want to hear about your, your background. But over 2,000 times speaking, does that blow your mind sometimes that you've been all over the world speaking that many times? Um, I cannot believe. <laughs> I, I can't believe that I've had the opportunity to speak two or three times. <laughs> it, honestly, because, True. Uh, yeah. especially when I started, yeah. oh my goodness, I was terrible. You know, like the people, God gave them grace. <laughs> God gave them grace to listen to me and just kind of stumble and figure yeah. everything out. Good but, uh, people, good people. And it shows like how good God is too, to say, <laughs> I can true. use someone like Mike and yeah. here we are 2,000 plus times later just... God wow. continued opening door after door. And, and, and where are you speaking? Give me an example of uh, sort of like the, the different kinds of speaking that you're doing. That's great. Yeah. So um, I've been all over Canada, all over the United States, around the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a few weeks, uh, well, not a few weeks, a few months, I'll be doing a conference in Dubai. Like, wow. It's like weird Dubai. Thing. Yeah. Of all Amazing. places. Amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, done stuff in like Asia and like mm -hmm. Europe and had invites into Africa. Like, And are they youth conferences or are they all different ages? That's a great question. Um, it's all different ages. Uh, yeah. When people look at me, they assume he just speaks to young people. But it's actually quite 50-50 with adults yeah. and young people. Mm -hmm. The youth conferences, you know, the ones that bring in the bands and the speakers and yeah. whatnot. Those are the ones that I would travel a little more for, you yeah. know, across the country and U.S. and whatnot. But very often, it's, you know, Sunday morning churches or maybe speaking, you know, in Bible colleges or doing workshops yeah. or whatnot. It's a little bit of everything. Um, my heart is for the young generation, but yeah. I'm not limited to the yeah. young generation, which I think plays a part in those 2,000 speaking engagements. Yeah. You open yourself up for whoever says we can use him and I want to serve. That's amazing. That's my heart, that's serve. Well, your list of people you've spoken with or partnered with on like, you know, sort of the speaking circuit. I mean, Francis Chan, mm -hmm. the Newsboys, Lecrae, Hillsong, Nick Vujicic. I mean, those are some pretty significant Christian voices today. What's that been like to share the stage with these people? Because I mean, that's big. And, and usually, you know, you, people think, you got to be like way older to kind of get mm -hmm. to that place. And here you are as this, you know, young man sharing the stage with these people. What's that been like? Well, when you look around, the first thought in your head yeah. is one of these people aren't like the other. You know, it's me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what am I doing here? One of these things is not <laughs> like the other. Yeah. It, Sorry, they brought me back to my childhood, I love but go it. ahead. I love it. <laughs> it it's humbling, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but the amazing thing from my experience behind the scenes with all these, uh, you know, Christian artists and all these uh, speakers and pastors and authors, everyone's so down to earth. Mm -hmm. Everyone's so humble. So no one's walking around like a big shot. Yeah, so when, when you're in that scene, like you don't feel like you have to measure up to this bar or you have to put on a certain persona or flash your credentials or your resume. Yeah, like, hi, I'm Francis Chan. And yeah. hi, I'm Lecrae. <laughs> Exactly. And you're like, and hi, I'm Mike Gordon. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So like, yeah. you know, and, and so everyone's very approachable. Yeah. So you can just go and sit down with like Lecrae. Like you can go sit down with Nick or, you know, yeah. all these people. And, and that's just really cool um, mm -hmm. and amazing. But everyone's so humble. Everyone's so uh, right in the right place. They have the heart, you know, for ministry. And sometimes you hear funny things behind yeah. the scenes of 
or up front where people say, oh, they lost focus or they're just about the rock star stuff or they're just about this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, if you saw them behind the scenes, like... You know their heart. You know their heart and they just, they just break all those stereotypes. Yeah, so amazing. Um, so I don't know why or how, but <laughs> I love it. I'm yeah, thankful. And you, amazing. You, you meet some great friends along the way. In those times of speaking, what's your themes? Like, I mean, you've been speaking a lot. And, I mean, I've been speaking a lot, I think, for over 20 years. And so you kind of have a running theme. I change it up depending on, obviously, audience. But the the foundational theme for me, for me and my own story, is like the father's love, um, adoption, and grace. Those are kind of my three themes. And then I kind of, like, add and change up, right, depending mm-hmm. on the year, cultural, you know, relevance. What would you say your sort of themes are that you've been speaking about? Oh, that's a great question. I try my best to keep switching everything up, yeah. like you mentioned. But I feel like when I put talk together, yeah. they fall into one or two categories. Okay. So the one category is to the broken people, the hurting people, the people who maybe have grown up in church and were told all this stuff about God. Mm. And then maybe those three or four scriptures didn't line up with maybe the rest of life. So something happens, they go through a negative circumstance, and they look at maybe these four scriptures and say, well, these four scriptures say God was supposed to do everything I wanted or answer every Mm. prayer or that I shouldn't go through trouble. And sometimes we see a lot of people, um, when they experience trouble in life, you know, they lose faith. Or they start walking out of the church and say, it's not what I signed up for. Yeah. So I love speaking to people there and understand, have them understand um, God is still with them. God mm-hmm. never given up on them. And sometimes life just stinks sometimes. You know, and Jesus says, in the world we will have trouble. But he also says, take heart because I will overcome the world. Yeah. So it falls into that, under that category mm-hmm. quite a bit. And the other category, just letting people understand God wants to use them. Like ordinary people. Like yeah. I think we're all in some way, shape, or form leaders. I think uh, we all can share the gospel. I think we all can live uh, extraordinary lives, you know, mm-hmm. however we define that. Yeah. Sometimes culture maybe tries to put us in a little box mm-hmm. and say, this is who you are and who you're supposed to be and here's your limitations. And sometimes we listen. Sometimes we obey. Sometimes we let culture dictate our life. Mm-hmm. So I love speaking to people, saying, no, 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 like Jesus, like he used ordinary people. Yeah. And here we are years later and we're seeing what God was able to do with them. Why can't he do that with you? Amazing. So, so it seems like they kind of fall into, the, for the most part, those categories and many different ideas and topics and themes and scriptures. Yeah. And, but So good. Now, when you look at that, so you're on stage, whether it's in front of five people or like 20,000 people, are there moments where you're like, I can't believe Mike Gordon, this kid who, you know, did not have this, you know, Christian upbringing, get here? Like other moments of like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Because I get those. I've had those. Where I'm like, wow. Like, you know, if you saw me way back in my teens, even in my early 20s, a lot of people would not have ever placed me where I am today. Because I was, you know, I was messed up. I had no idea what I was doing, no focus, kind of one foot in the church, one foot out, you know, clubbing with my friends and then doing youth group Friday nights. Like I was just, I was kind of all over the place. And if, if people are looking, when I, you know, finally went to Bible college and said, yeah, Melinda's going to be doing this sort of like, you know, mission work in media, they, there's no way. <laughs> they really isn't. Is that for you? Like, do you feel sometimes that same way just from your own background? 100%. Um, and I have two different categories. Okay. So um, there's the people who I knew when I became a Christian, one in the ministry, people I went to Bible college with who probably had very low expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yep. He's not going to make it too far. Yeah. Um, but at least he'll maybe do something for the kingdom of God, but maybe not, like, you know, huge. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so there, there's those people who I, you know, yeah. I cross paths with, and yeah. they would say, like, oh, God's actually using you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, I don't know how. Wow. But, <laughs> uh, but then and the other unique category um, are the people I knew before I became a Christian. People in high school who, because of social media, um, it's very easy for them uh, to see what you're up to and, yeah. and uh, stay in touch with them in some way, shape, or form. And the remarkable thing is the power of social media. Sometimes we forget who's watching, who's yeah. reading, who's looking. Yeah. So I can just put once in the blue moon, like maybe put a scripture up or maybe mm-hmm. a cool quote from an author or, or whatnot. And then the part that surprises me is when, you know, that person doesn't know Jesus I went to high school with, mm-hmm. just simply likes it. I'm like, 
what? They're looking, they're watching, they're seeing they're, this. And they're reading the scripture? Exactly. Yeah. Or if they send me a private message saying, can you pray for me? Mm-hmm. Or I'm looking for some wisdom. So that's the part that also, that's also quite remarkable where you have no idea, yeah. you know, the example that you, um, you are in someone's life. And sometimes it's those little moments, uh, moments which makes me realize, wow, okay, God seems to be doing something. And I don't know, it's a humbling journey. Absolutely. But so it, it let's talk it. about the journey because, you know, I am always love those kinds of stories where, I mean, for me, Mike, I was brought up, you know, in a Christian home, a missionary kid, you know, pastor's kid, and so always knew about Jesus, and which is hard in some way because it's always like your family's faith, and so you kind of like get brought into it. And then there's expectations with that versus for your own story, you know, there's some, there was a choice to be made. So let's talk about that. Um, love stories. And so talk to me about how you found Jesus, because it didn't start from like the very beginning. Mm-hmm. I wasn't born on the altar, you know? So <laughs> I... <laughs> you weren't? No, okay. no, believe it or not. Yeah, it's a great question. So I did not grow, grow up in a Christian home. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, I guess we didn't have your basic Christian values mm-hmm. and, and morals and, and mm-hmm. whatnot. Uh, so like my house, you know, growing up, I thought it was a great household, great family. And I was quite naive, you know, maybe more of the behind the scenes going on with my family, my parents and mm-hmm. whatnot. And uh, when I was 13, my mom and dad broke up. And uh, what happened was my mom was cheating on my dad. and. You know, that's not the best formula for a very successful marriage, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um, and what happened was when they broke up, I was 13 years old, and my mindset was the man my mom was cheating with, he was like the enemy. He was like the one who broke up my family, and, and I wanted nothing to do with him mm-hmm. at all. The reality is my mom had a different idea. She wanted me to have everything to do with him. In other words, she wanted him to essentially replace my dad wow. and just kind of ultimately move in and, and be the father of the year. And because of that, I didn't get along with him. Um, when I was 13 years old, right before I started high school in August, uh, I got in a you know a fight with this man and uh, my mom kicked me out of the house. And it wasn't like kicked out, come back tomorrow. It was the next day the police had to escort me into the house right. with a garbage bag and they said, you got five minutes to get your stuff, and and uh, life gets serious, you know. Right around then, mm-hmm. you grow up quickly. Yeah, moved in with my dad, and you know it was a situation where ultimately he didn't really care what I did. Mm-hmm. And, and and I know sometimes for young people the dream is I wish my parent didn't care. Like mm-hmm. I would say straight up. You should thank God that your parents care, that they care about where you're going, when you're coming home, what you're doing, who you're hanging out with. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it had like free for all. I can do whatever I wanted. And, uh, you know, the culture I was in, the city I was, I was in, and the neighborhood I was in, and just the people I was around, it was very easy to turn to anything to try to look for fulfillment. And essentially, I think that's what I was looking for. I was mm-hmm. looking to be. Fulfilled. I wasn't looking to be a rebel. I wasn't looking just to break the rules. I wasn't looking, you know, just to, you know, uh, lash out that way. Mm-hmm. I think ultimately I was just looking for anything that would fulfill me or maybe anything that would give me love. Yeah. Now, the challenge is none of these things worked. You know, all these things were, you know, they're all in vain. Mm-hmm. And sometimes for, for myself, I didn't realize that until you go down that road or you make these choices or uh, you make these decisions and you realize, huh, I'm mm-hmm. still quite empty. It's not exactly fulfilling. And that's basically, for a good part of my high school life, how I lived. You know, I walked around uh, empty. I walked around quite hopeless. Mm-hmm. Um, I try not to use those big words like suicide and you know depressed and whatnot because I don't think I was suicidal. I don't think mm-hmm. I was depressed. But there were days I didn't want to live. There were days I never want to get out of bed and whatnot. But ultimately, I was empty. It wasn't doing anything Hmm. for me. And at that point, I guess I was just open to anything. Like anything. Is there any other way? Is there anything that's like true love or true fulfillment? Is there any other way in life? And around this time, I had a friend who started going to church Hmm. in the neighborhood. And this friend... um, I knew him since I was three or four years old. It was one of those situations where his mom was friends with my mom, 
And, you know, we were basically friends by default. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. And like play dates. And you things. had to. You had no yeah, choice. Exactly. Yeah. You had no choice. <laughs> it was more for your mom's. It, it was. It like their play date. It was. Not necessarily yours, but. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I was basically forced to hang out with this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> when great. I was three or four years old. Uh, I think God knew what he was doing. Yeah. Um, so this man, well, a man now, a boy, mm-hmm. essentially, when he was in high school, he randomly started going to the local church down the street. Randomly. Well, I think he got word that that's, that's where all the good-looking girls go. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah, this yeah, is before just, Twitter. This <laughs> is before, like, Instagram. Um, I'm not sure if, like, a newspaper. Okay, that, went out and said, there's really good-looking girls at the youth group. Yeah, I missed it. But, <laughs> but he started going. Yeah. He wasn't wrong, but... <laughs> But that's not why I went. Oh, um, boys, uh, <laughs> boys. Like, seriously, the good-looking girls. Whatever it takes. takes. Whatever it takes. <laughs> How revival can happen in our country. No, I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. But his name is Daryl. And Daryl, uh, as he started getting involved in the church, he was all in. Like He was doing everything wow. they were a part of. And he shared with me that the, the church was renting my high school gym every Saturday, Saturday evening with the goal just to open it up and say anyone who wants to come and play basketball or whatever sport it was going to be, um, essentially basketball every night, uh, every Saturday night, anyone can come. Now, it wasn't show up and, you know, now they're secretly going to preach to us. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, no, just come and play. And, and through that, um, in attending, not knowing what to expect, mm-hmm. I met the youth pastor, Rob. And Rob was the one that really... Uh, started to direct me to ultimately what I was looking for, mm-hmm. what my soul and my spirit was essentially looking for, which was Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and through that, he, he, it didn't start like, again, he didn't hand me some Bible. You know, he didn't mm-hmm. say, here's our, our service time, you know, on a Sunday morning. Yeah. He said, how's your week going? How's your day going? Mm-hmm. How are you doing? And to me, this is weird. This is really weird. I didn't grow up in a church culture where, you know, let's be honest, church <laughs> culture, like youth pastors, they're, love yeah, them. Yeah, but, but they're so like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. How's your heart? What's your temperature? Talk to me about like, right? Like exactly. they're, they're so like all in. Are you it, all in? 100%. So right? I'm, not, I'm not used to yeah, that. And I the think. language is so different, isn't it? it? Is. I th- yeah. It is. So here I am. I'm thinking, why is an adult, adult asking me, why, why does he care? Yeah. And the reality is he actually cared for me and about me. Mm-hmm. It took me a little while to understand that. Yeah. Because here I am coming like from the mindset, what does he want out of me? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's his angle? What, what is he really searching for? Like, is he, do I, do I have to give him money? Because sometimes the stereotype mm-hmm. church, we got, they want our money. Yeah. That's weird. But, you know, yeah. um, but I started, you know, developing a really good trust with this man. So he would take me out for lunch and then wow. eventually invited me to church. Mm. Now, the first time I ever stepped in, put in church with Rob wasn't what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. We'll say that. It, it, he, uh, he invited me to a service where no young people went to. I'll put it that way. <laughs> okay. If I'm looking around, I'm thinking, you know. Where's all the good looking girls? Where are all the good looking? Uh, there's some good looking grandmas, you know, but no. <laughs> no good looking but, but no one in my age bracket. So uh, they're all taken. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, and, and, and the other reality was I did not understand what was happening. Like, why are people singing? Why yeah, it's, is very, man, it's, a, it's a weird culture, isn't it's it? It's a weird For culture. For someone who doesn't know. No idea. But the thing that did stick out was. Um, the few young people that were there, and the reality is they all went, they all went to a different service, mm-hmm. um, which I hung out for, you know, mm-hmm. a second service, what we called it. And it was those people where I, I saw something, mm-hmm. like something that like I didn't have, something that the friends I was hanging out with didn't have, just a, just a life, you know, a, mm-hmm. like a, some sort of peace, some sort of like spark. You know, I, yeah. I don't know, I yeah. couldn't really explain it, but you just knew there was something different about them. Mm-hmm. And that got me, it kept me in the picture. It kept me um, essentially going to different youth events and ultimately getting involved in a, you know, a Bible study. Now, I was the one in the Bible study who would not make eye contact and yeah. <laughs> try to avoid any question, answer, like... But you, but you showed up. I kept showing up. Hmm. I kept showing up. And it was actually in a small group uh, Bible study one night where Rob, it was my last year of high school, Rob says, 
we're planning a mission trip down in Mexico. And I remember this so well, like not really knowing what a mission trip was at all. Mm-hmm. He didn't really explain it. Mm-hmm. Everyone knew what it was except me. This was like a time like when what like, is that like Mission Impossible oh, no. mission? Well, yeah, this, like what is that? It what was because mean? Mission Impossible that was like big at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You know, youth group. We take these themes from like yeah, movies. and you're probably thinking dun dun dun. Oh, without dun, a dun, doubt, dun, you know, dun, like I'll be dun, like dun. being raised, raised from yeah, the butt right. down and. <laughs> All in black. Up, yeah, yeah. Like what you're wearing now. Exactly, exactly. And like, yeah, on a rope. It's on a rope. <laughs> we should have done the interview that we way. We totally should have done it I'm upside down hanging. over the microphone. Over the, in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's great. mission. So that's your context when, you, when you're when you saying mission. Yeah, no idea. To Mexico. Okay. So I remember this so well. Like after that small group, I went up to them. And I felt like a little awkward. Mm-hmm. And I remember saying, like, I don't really go to the, go to your church. I didn't really feel like feel like I associated myself with the church, although I would show up here and there. I don't, but I told them, "Can I still go, or is it just for like the church people, the mm-hmm. people who are born on the altar? You know, like yeah, just for them?" Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, of course! Like I want awesome. you to come." And he was all in and yeah. super um, excited about it. And because of that, he did say, "Like we're going to do some fundraising events in the church. Members are." Going to be going to be making some donations, so it'll be great for you to show up, maybe a little bit more, just so they can see your face, and ultimately, you know, kind of kind of get me ready. Yeah, to go down. Yeah, exactly. So I started showing up at church um, much more, and we went down uh, March two thousand two hmm. down to Mexico, and it, it just changed everything. It just changed my perspective of life. And, and so we're, we were staying in an orphanage and, and I remember this one particular day where, you know, there's maybe like, you know, eight, nine children just running around, smiling, you know, mm-hmm. playing soccer and just having fun. But the reality is like many of these children didn't have any parents or had no idea where their parents were. Yeah. And, and here we are in this little courtyard and then beyond the courtyard, it's kind of like a mountain. And it looked like, just to be honest, the back of letter ter- a better uh, terms, it looked like just a garbage dump. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a garbage dump. These were people's home. They took whatever scrap, metal, and whatever mm-hmm. can create shelter. So I remember sitting there and looking at, you know, the scenery and the homes and, and these children. And I just realized, like, I'm so blessed to be in Toronto. Wow. And, and, I'm, and I really had this my moment where I realized I'm wasting my life. I'm wasting my life doing the drugs. I'm wasting my life with the drinking, the partying, and, like, you know, the street stuff. I'm wasting my life. Like, you know, I, I could be in a different situation where I didn't, didn't have those opportunities and ultim- ultimately advantages. Yeah. So I started really getting my eyes, you know, you know open. And then that week as well, uh, every evening we would have chapel service. Mm-hmm. And the fir- very first one, the pastor who was speaking, who was a different person from our church, he always would ask, where did you see God today? Where did you see God today? Good where question. Did, where did you see God yeah. today? Now, again... You don't, have, you don't have the context as far as what that could mean. Exactly. So someone puts their hand up. Oh, I saw God working in this situation. I'm just like, what a weirdo. I was, I was there. God was <laughs> I not... I God. I did not see way. God. <laughs> yeah. I saw God in this conversation. I'm just like, these people are nuts. Like, what did I sign yeah. up for? Yeah. I'm literally thinking they're talking about physical, like, God walking. Yeah. Like, like he came down and he was right there. And I somehow missed it. It was like polka dot door, like, yeah. you know, poker room, like, yeah. where was I kind of thing. And... It took me a few days to really understand what they were saying, what they were truly asking. Mm. And I remember one particular night, actually, uh, I was too shy to put my hand up and say, hey, I saw God here. But I was listening. And someone put their hand up and said, hey, I saw God in this situation today or in this conversation. And that was kind of the part that was on my heart to say, like, I saw that too. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Uh uh-oh, this is, oh, (laughs) I think I'm getting it. And on the Wednesday night, the, the pastor, he uh, decided he wanted to give a full gospel message to the 25, maybe 30 Christian Canadian kids and who so, are down here. And gospel means just sharing about Jesus, his life, what Everything. he did, his death, resurrection, all that. Everything from Adam and Eve. All the way through. All the way through. Yeah. And at this point, I've heard a little bit of this and that. I never heard the full message together. Wow. So that he just brought it all together. And what did it do? Oh, it uh, made me realize I need Jesus. Yeah. 
he gave this response time. Anyone who wants to come up to the front and give their life to Jesus, here's your opportunity. Now, nobody else was going up to the front. Because they were all Christian. They were all Christian. Yeah. All Christian. So I wasn't going up by myself. <laughs> like, I was so nervous. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So I sat there and just kind of tried not to make eye contact with anyone. And mm. when I went back to my room, I went to my bed. I just started praying. And I'm bawling. I'm wow. crying. Like, my street oh, credibility my. my yeah. street credibility Your is street gone. Your street credit but, is done. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but ultimately, wow. when we were there, it was just... Uh, I, I made that decision. I said, Lord, I'm done doing life my way. I want to do life your way. And went back to Toronto, went back home, and it was like, honestly, God changed absolutely everything. It's real, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people kind of roll their eyes when it's like, you know, God can change your life when you make that decision. And I think as Christians, we've done a disservice to really say, actually, he does. Because sometimes we're embarrassed to say that, or maybe we haven't fully felt it, or maybe it didn't happen in in a complete way for us. But he really does. And I think more, you know, Christians, you know, people that are really loving and trying should be able to articulate that. Because he really, like, people say that all the time, like, you know, what's the difference? It's like everything. Mm -hmm. How you see the world, how you see people, how you love people, how you live it out. Like, yeah. it it matters. It, he changes you. And, you know, his spirit is in you, which kind of sounds crazy for people. But I'm like, <laughs> he is. And he's, like, guiding and leading us. And that's huge. That is really huge. And so when you came back and you said, okay, God... I mean, I don't kind of give my life to you. That was sort of like the start of what, where you are today. That, the it, whole journey of it all. The whole journey. You know, Mike, some of the t things, it's an amazing story. I love stories of, of sort of the testimony and the story of how you found Jesus. There's so many things that are takeaways there. I think going all the way back to the beginning, it's a reminder for people to ask people to engage with them in with God, whether it's church or an outing or a youth group thing, we can't be afraid, right? Because what's the worst thing they can say? No. Exactly. So who cares? Mm -hmm. But just to ask people, I mean, not being too stockish mm -hmm. or too, but just ask people, because if your friend hadn't asked you to go, you could, who knows who, where you'd God be. God knows, literally. Right? Yep. So that's a good takeaway. I mean, I think for me, it's like, ask people, you know, in, in you know, why not? Why not? <laughs> and then I think second is someone who's, you know, older and, you know, there's a lot of people who listen and watch the show who are in that place, you know, be mentor, care for young people. They're so open. Mm -hmm. Have you found that? I mean, youth are so open and looking for truth. I think, yeah, I think it was... Um, different generations. I think sometimes there's misperceptions, you know, where sometimes the old, maybe an older generation might think the young generation is not open. Uh, and vice versa, I can say the young generation, maybe we sometimes make stereotypes about yeah. maybe the older generation. Yeah. I, I find there's a lot of openness on both ends and, right. and there's so much wisdom on both ends as well that yeah. we can share it together. And, and, uh, and I love the mentorship part of church. And I think we need more of that sometimes and not be yeah. so afraid or assume. Well, even for, you know, Rob, is it, who is the? Rob. Rob. Yeah. I mean, even for Rob, it's like, how are you doing? Like, even <sighs> we have to realize that when we go out into the world, and I've been trying to be better at this, that every opportunity is an opportunity to point to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when I give grace or look somebody in the eye and call them by name and thank them or how are you doing? That matters. That's part of who God's character is to see and identify people, to acknowledge their existence and presence in the world, that no one's alone. And so those are good reminders for me yeah. that as someone like that who engages with young people and people all the time, to see people the way God sees them. Wow. Just like Rob did, right? I mean, it's like, how are you? Exactly. And let's go out for lunch versus here's a track and... Let's do it quickly. You I know, agree. I want you in. I want you in. I you know, agree. as another number statistic, it's not. It's about relationship. Very true. And I think in Canada, I don't think it's as complicated as we make it. You know, maybe <laughs> there's other true. countries. Obviously, yeah. you know, different culture, different things are happening where it might have to be a lot more extreme, or you know, in, in regards to you know, really putting your faith out there. Mm -hmm. In Canada, we have so much freedom, and I think it's a lot more simple. And 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 I think when we start realizing that. Hopefully we can understand like 
what's the worst that can happen? Like you yeah. mentioned, why am I letting fear stop me? Like yeah. rather than thinking what what's the worst that can happen? What if we start thinking what's the best that can happen? Yeah. What if that person did come to Christ? What if that prayer, you know, did change them? Well, what if you saying hello or making eye contact and saying how's your day? Mm-hmm. What if that, you know, made their day? Like we make it so complicated sometimes. And I think we're seeing, especially in the culture that we're in, those little things, you know, they do shine. You yeah. know, and we're called to be a light of the world. Yeah. And sometimes I know I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I'm more focused on being the light of the church. Hmm. In other words, inside the building, I'm on fire for Jesus. But sometimes when I step out, I forget. Like, that's really where, where our calling begins. Yeah. And it's good. So it ask, ask people to come, show up, and you know, um, invite people to be in relationship. And then I think third and fourth, I mean, third, I think is a lot of times we're like, we want them to be a Christian and then they can go on the mission trip. Mm -hmm. We want them to be a Christian and then they can do the work. Well, no, I think, imagine this radical idea of inviting people to be a part of what we're a part of so that they can see the transformation that comes in relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we always tend to say, you can't do this until you, well, I don't think that's that's part of it. I think it's like, you know, come come join us and be a part of the community. And and from there, you'll be able to make the decision on following Jesus. I think that's really cool. So but the church has some struggles with that. But I love that idea that they were like, yeah, you can do a mission trip. <laughs> yeah. But you weren't even, quote, unquote, a Christian no. yet. You They were like, sure, come on down and be a part of helping these communities. Exactly. So great. So that is the third takeaway. And the fourth, I think, is... We can't forget that the gospel, the the message of Jesus and his life is transformational. It it needs to be shared. We can't water it down. We can't be ashamed of it. But the gospel of Jesus has to be shared. I agree. You know, like I agree. Th- you know, this is a lot. I'm learning with you, but just that's a lot of stuff to say. These are really good learnings because sometimes we water. I'll be honest, water it down. It's like we need relationship. We need to love. But when there is opportunity, you share the story, you share the truth of Jesus. I agree with that. Because I would say there's a lot of people in the church. You know, when I was working at a at a, a show um, back, you know, a number of years ago, you know, I was a reporter, and we were, I was interviewing people about what Easter was, and I was on the street, and there's people that were, you know, from churches. And I said, you know, what does Easter mean? What happened? There were people literally who said, oh, I go to this church, but they couldn't actually tell me the story of Easter. Oh, wow. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, I don't think I've ever heard the story. I'm like, what do you mean you've never heard the story? You go to church and like, I honestly don't ever remember them telling the story, you know, from the beginning to end wow. of of Jesus and, you know, Old Covenant, New Covenant and Messiah. I was like, oh. wow. so I know it's strange, it but is. I mean, it really struck me. I'm on the street with my mic and it was like, you've never heard the story? And she's like, oh, yeah, I go to church here in Toronto. I'm like. So it was something that, wow, I mean, for yeah. years, if I've kept saying that's important to remember, too. I agree with that. And, I, and I'm a big believer, um, especially with this generation. I think they want the truth. So anytime when I'm teaching or have an opportunity to share the gospel, my perspective is always lay all the cards on the table. Hmm. Yeah. Don't just talk about maybe this angle of just the gospel message, which seems a lot more attractive and maybe leaving out the dying to self part. <laughs> um, I always say throw it all on the table because I think the generation really appreciates the truth and transparency. And that gives them a better opportunity to really say, is this something I want to take hold of? Is this something I want to ask more questions about? And they can really process it on their own. The challenge is when we kind of show the gospel from a certain angle or a little bit of it or water it down. Yeah. And someone says, well, I'll give my life to Christ. And then when they take two steps in, they're like, wait, what? No one told me about that part. <laughs> right. I don't want anything to do with totally this. Totally agree. So I think you're 100% right. We have to take those opportunities. And yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Mike, loved having you here. What, just to finish up, what's your hope for you in the future? What do, where do you want to see your life in the next couple of years? That's so great. <laughs> That's a big question. I know. And you, I've given you 30 seconds. 30 no. seconds. Uh, 30 seconds. Ah, ah, I'm, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm working on a book. Okay. 
I my right. hope is by the time I'm done the book, people still like reading. <laughs> I'm sure Maybe people, you need to do an audio book. I know, I think so, yeah. <laughs> or a vlog. Or a picture book. You know? <laughs> or a picture book. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it just opens up. Oh, that'd oh, be awesome. That would be great. <gasps> like the pop-up picture book oh, of your life. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Okay. Perfect. So the, the picture book, go ahead. I, so I then... got the picture book in the works. <laughs> 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 I would love to get that out, you know, yeah. and finish and just trust God if that's for one person or, mm-hmm. I don't know, who knows. Um, with the speaking, I, I really feel like this is where my heart is. This is where God has uh, has me right now. I don't know if that's 20 years down the road or mm-hmm. five years. I have no idea. I'm just continuing to be open. But regardless, with the speaking and the traveling, I meet a lot of leaders, I meet a lot of pastors, and I meet a lot of churches, and, and I start seeing what's happening, maybe some of the, the struggles that some are having, or especially with this generation trying to be the church in this culture. And ultimately, if it's speaking or writing or blogging, I just want to be on the front line of you know helping the church move forward in Canada, in this culture, to reach this generation. And, and, uh, and I don't know what that looks like, but... That's my hope. So I'm just open. Amazing. Gotta keep, keep learning, and God knows. Mike, I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for your future. I really am. I feel that you're just on the on the right track, and just keep close to God and be open. Um, there's so much you're doing. You have a passion for young professionals. You've got a great website with lots of information. How can people reach you if they want to book you to speak or just, you know, see what you're up to? Without a doubt. Uh, the website is the easiest. Uh, yeah. so www.mike.com dash gordon.ca the yeah. little dash the dash is important you have the dash unfortunately but I'll, I'll take <laughs> yeah. it so mike dash gordon dot ca okay and, and that has all my social media links and whatnot so if you want to book me you can send me an email or shoot yeah. me a message on facebook it's not super complicated yeah not, not at all but if you want to see what i'm up to or where i'm going or maybe even how to pray yeah. for myself you know feel free to check that out and if you have any questions as well about ministry or culture or church or leadership, you know, I'm always open to help and answer and maybe give a little tiny wisdom yeah. if I have it, or if not, I'll direct them to you. So <laughs> you can, <laughs> yeah. well, I get calls, hi, Mike couldn't answer the question. <laughs> Linda, can you? <laughs> I love it. And then I'll open my picture book. And be like, this is it. There you go. On page seven. <laughs> page seven yeah. Oh, so much fun. Such a pleasure to have you. I'm really excited for you. And thanks again. Thanks for being here on the show. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for checking out this week's episode of Your Story with Melinda. There's plenty more at faithstrongtoday.com slash your story. But if you really want more, make sure you subscribe to the show so you never, ever miss an episode.